everybody, I want to wheeze them here. We are down, believe it or not, to our final two Skylander Imaginator Sensei's from Wave 1 and 2. Launch day delivery, I guess pre-launch day delivery from the folks at Skylanders. Uh, standard price on these would be $14.99, but again, uh, luckily these were sent out to us. We're going to be taking a look at Master Chopscotch this time. Why? She was heavily requested. Uh, Daphne and I believe we Monsieur Matthews wanted this here. And uh, let's see here, Master Chopscop, she is obviously undead element, she is a smasher, and... Chop till you drop! Oh yeah, chop till you drop. Uh, that is of course her slogan, that reminds me of the Shopkins. Uh, very kind of catchy, has that same sort of like energetic vibe to the voice, if you will. Uh, there's the artwork and the inside look, not much of an angle there. Uh, this side, not much either. Uh, I think she's going to be a character that uh, top down is going to be ideal. So uh, let's go ahead now and flip this around. Skylanders, Imaginators, onto the portal, into the game. That simple inset box art right there from Master Child Scotch. Looks like she has taken a look at her eye, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what they can do, Sky, since they Skylanders unleash almighty Sky Chi powers, unlock unique gear and weapons for your Imaginator Skylanders. 30 plus to collect, including... Ambush, unboxed, airstrike, unboxed, Barbella, she's the last one. She's who we who we lack. Uh, Ember, unboxed, and a crud ton of creation crystals. Now, to open one of these, you need to move this tab out, and we've got two little tape dots centered on the sides. But there's one more thing to do. This is probably the coolest change. These are flat boxes. Uh, you can shelve them flat. You can stack them when you get them. You can turn them like I've done here for like a really cool display. Uh, you can use it as a backdrop for pictures, whatever you want to do. Uh, but what they've done for retailers, it'll sit flat standard, but then there's a little recess in the box and you can actually pull out this tab. And that will of course hang it up on a standard J-hook or something. But what we're going to do is use our not really present fingernails and attempt to get this out in one piece. And again, I can't stress enough, if you plan to cut this out and use it for decoration, if you want to reseal the box, uh, whatever your logic is, if you're not just going to trash this, always cut that tape. Otherwise, you run the risk of tearing the artwork on the top, and that, as you know, would be very sad. The Undead Element logo is cascaded all over this thing, uh, from the bottom, up the sides, onto the top, and, as you will see, it's even on the inside here. Uh, it is on this flap, it is on that flap, it is on all the flaps, and that makes it pretty cool. It sometimes doesn't show up well, that shows up incredibly well, uh, so that is cool. These have proven a little difficult to get out due to the new and improved packaging. No confirmation on this, I'm probably not going to ask, but my belief is they wanted to minimize the situation where you would walk into a store, see Chop Scotch, and her hair's down here on the ground, or she's sideways or upside down or some crazy configuration in a sealed pack. Uh, and they have subsequently made this hug the figures much tighter, in my opinion. Uh, makes it a little tougher to get out, but the end goal simply being get these from the factory to you, the portal master, in the tip-top shape. So uh, that's what they're doing. They now come in kind of like this C channel here. And we're going to unleash the canopy, 45 degree angle. As always, I practice this. Uh, I come in, hold down by the base, work from the back side, and pay attention to the weak points that could prove fragile or potentially breakable. So we're going to, I guess, start with the pony Freed it in the awkward angle of the axe. <laughs> What's keeping her in place? There we go. We'd had we've been on a good streak. This is the most trouble we've had. With several imaginators. Uh, given the shape and everything, that is not hard to believe. Here is Master Chopscotch. First thing that sticks out to me, uh, this might offend some people, it's the base. The undead base is thus far, in my opinion, the light element base, though, pretty cool. That and undead uh, take the cake in terms of base design. Just the color on this is so freaking awesome. Uh, she is an undead element smasher. Again, you can see the smasher icon there. Other smasher, of course, earth element tri-tip. So uh, flipping this around, you've got the undead logo Activision on the backside. Uh, we have got sort of that nice textured feel here. 
she's very for the stature she's quite heavy number one you wouldn't think she would be heavy since she was so much smaller than the others granted it's a giant axe i realize that <laughs> it's uh sometimes you would think like the mass would be in the character she's very uh very heavy compared to some of the others that i thought would be heavier uh needless to say it's man i'm trying to think I don't know if they still do this, if it's still a thing or not. Like, when I was probably third grade, I think, uh, there's like this library contest thing, and you like read, read or take tests or something and get points, and then you use your points to buy stuff, and the prizes all kind of sucked, and I didn't know that until I'd already accumulated like a crud ton of points, and I just saved them up because everything they had sucked, and so top point thing was like 250 or something and it was a jawbreaker but it wasn't like a standard size you know like a little peppermint size i mean this was one of those like massive ones in like this little plastic encasement that flips out in half and i think it was i can't remember if it was jurassic park themed or dinosaur themed but what i'm getting at is the texture it was like this weird gray pebbly boulder type of a vibe and uh, skull-like, you know, not shaped like a skull, but just the the texture and feel, the coarseness of it. I remember it. Uh, it reminds me of Chopscotch's head. <laughs> uh, whether anyone can go on Google and find a jawbreaker like I'm talking about, whether you grew up around the same time I did, or you're just a jawbreaker fanatic and you know exactly what I'm talking about, if anyone knows what I'm talking about, feel free to comment and you know, like link a picture or something. But I thought that when I'd seen her on the artwork and I wanted to wait till I unboxed her. This is, I kid you not, it's like almost exact to that jawbreaker. The color, the tones, the texture. It was one of those deals. It's not like a perfectly smooth surface, like a cue ball for the pool table. It was like dimpled and rough and textured and that's what I see here in her. <laughs> so whether that's beneficial to you or not i don't know but it makes sense to me so that's what strikes me with her the other thing not a fan of the black and the gold really but she's so short it doesn't matter the black works well actually uh for the gloves uh the gold i feel like she would have been served better with maybe a silver but i guess gold is like the official uniform or something uh, but she actually looks pretty good, I have to say. Uh, not sure how she's going to pan out. Or she's got the follow me eyes going. There's an interesting thing, too, because this is twofold, in my opinion, all right? So you would assume, and I don't know for sure because I haven't played her, but I'm assuming, obviously, eyes, and then that would be the mouth, right? And woohoo, she's saying her cute little Shopkins type things. Here's the deal, though. If you look at this, and this would be just like, oh yeah, that's just decoration or something. It actually looks like a skull. Chopscotch looks like a skull uh, right there. And again, that might be as it's intended, I don't know. But uh, when I had never seen the figure in person, I just always was, you know, picturing her like this. And it's just, you know, the little tiny, tiny little, you know, <laughs> Chopscotch lady, basically. But with these little divided, you know, coming down, it's again almost like the top teeth of a skull. And if you can get past that, I think you'll be able to see it. Like if I block off her pants, do you see the skull I'm talking about? <laughs> it's, uh, it's very hard for me to get my... There we go. You Again, don't focus on the opening. The triangular opening is her mouth. Focus on that as like a nasal cavity and then teeth. And you can sort of see this from a new perspective. And when you do that, instead of kind of viewing this as just like decoration, you start to kind of view it as sort of like, you know, striations in a skull. Uh, so very interesting. That is somewhat symmetrical. Uh, and again, somebody could have hidden their initials in here for all we know. But uh, it is done quite well, I have to say. But I just can't get past the jawbreaker aspect. And, you know, that's... Uh, I don't know that anyone else will really have that thought. But, hey, that's that's how I feel about it. Uh, right here, though, black gloves, golden bands on the cuffs. You can see nice detail on the back of the skull, even though it's covered up. Uh, you can see that kind of uniform texture that they all seem to have. The golden belt. You can kind of pick up on the stitching. 
sort of a dirty gothic purple hair <laughs> is the best way I could describe that. Uh, and then we come in and she's got, this is a big axe and this little chick is handling it quite well. She's got it against her hip. Looks like she's ready to unload it, uh, getting ready to torque it out and swing at it. Uh, an enemy but check this out you've got sort of a webbing effect on the axe that's at least what it reminds me of you got multiple cutting blades that way but it also kind of gives like a cool undead spider web cobweb type of a feel particularly when you view it from here it also kind of resembles bat wings if you were to kind of picture the uh handle of the axe is sort of the body and then the wings here on the side that's actually fairly sharp but look what it did don't you can't really see that kind of it put a pretty nice little dimple in me <laughs> and then there's a spear at the top which i felt is a nice touch this is cool skull and crossbones uh just for the simple fact it looks pirate-esque it adds to that brings an undead vibe but it's also got the bow and the ponytail uh which that's actually a pretty good you know if you were a chick into gaming or something uh, you always see like, you know, the teams that have the skulls and crossbones. This would actually be a nice design, and that almost looks like a heart. But the four teeth there, that makes me think. You know, like if you look at her from this angle, it's sort of as I thought she was intended to be. And then if you look at her from this angle, you can again pick up more on like it's a skull with top teeth literally placed on a torso, a lower body or something. I don't know. Uh, the cool thing here, though, is check this out. We've checked out the detail on the axe. Flip it over just as well detailed on the bottom side. I like that, and it's flipped as well. So just like in real life, if you care about your logo, you're not going to have the font facing the same way because then it would be awkward on the back side. It's flipped, so it's mirrored type of a thing. Uh, very logical, very practical. A lot of thought went into it issue i have i have not played her i have not really seen much of her in game in terms of attacks and upgrades and what she can do so i don't really know how to view her if it's how i used to view her or if it's like as the skull with little legs attached to it uh, so we're gonna have to figure that out but the base color on this i absolutely love it uh, you've got the bat wings as well i've covered that in our previous undead uh, video with Wolfgang. But speaking of that, let's go ahead and compare her and Wolfgang. If you did not know, these bases are uniform in size. It's really, really cool. Obviously, Undead Bowslinger and Wolfgang, Undead Smasher in Chopscotch. Sweet little setup there. And then just Smasher to Smasher, we've got Earth Element Tri Tip. I know I'm going to call him Tri Top Sums. If I do that, I apologize. Uh, but it's Tri Tip. Obviously, Triceratops. Top works, too. I think I've had this discussion when we first saw him. Uh, but here are two Smashers, uh, top and bottom together. Very neat. And I guess with that, we are ready to check out this chick's little bio. Uh, little bio. See what I did there? Uh, anyway, let me know what you think. It's, it's one of those things. I'm not exactly sure how to view her. Now, once we play her, we'll know for sure. But if this is your first time really analyzing it, you know, it could be construed multiple ways. That's kind of cool. That said, the only thing that ever mattered to Chopscotch was mastering her weapon of choice, the giant axe, literally the giant axe, while rocking out to her favorite musical idol, Wolfgang. Isn't that cool? It never bothered her that her short, uh, she was short in stature or that all the other ghouls in Underworld laughed at the way she spoke in rhymes as she made up her own lyrics to Wolfgang's guitar jams. So when Wolfgang joined the villainous Doom Raiders, she was devastated. But instead of letting it destroy her, she chose to put her axe skills to good use and fought Wolfgang and his moon goons when they attempted to curse her entire town during an evil concert. See also the future of Skylands. Her willingness to stand up to her longtime hero came as a surprise to everyone, and soon all of the villagers were speaking in rhymes in her honor. Soon after, she met Master Eon, who was so impressed at her fighting abilities and positive outlook that he recruited her as a sensei for the Smasher class. Now she teaches new Skylanders how to fight and how to rhyme. So very cool there, of course. I'm a big Wolfgang fan, and it kind of makes it bittersweet. Something that I said when I first saw that, I believe even in video form, I want to know more about the Moon Goons. I need more Moon Goons in my life. I don't know what they are, but I know I need more of them. Uh, hopefully in Imaginators, maybe we can get a feel for that. 
But uh, anyway, here we go. Little uh, gothic punk chick and her idol Wolfgang. Uh, even though he became evil and she fought him, I suppose they get along now. And perhaps they rock out from time to time. That said, this is Master Chopscotch Undead Smasher. A video just finished rendering. That means I can upload it. <laughs> the rendering is the slowest part of the process. But uh, yeah, it's like 3.40 in the morning, somewhere in there. And uh, I'm here cranking out videos, having a great time. Hope you are too. That said, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Comment with hashtag Chopscotch for a bonus brick in the Wall of Weasdom. Uh, the Wall of Weasdom, if you're unsure what it is, is kind of my way of thanking you for supporting the channel. Uh, it comes in at the end of a Weasdom Plays Minecraft episode. I usually do about 20 of them uh, kind of forever cements uh, your comment in time barring creeper or enderman and with that said uh, it's uh, just basically a way for me to say hey thanks get you involved kind of a community fueled build as well how big how tall how long the wall gets is sort of up to you and how how much you want to take advantage of it uh, but it's an in-game shout out essentially i also do scholars of wisdom you can see those at the start of the episode uh, it's a little different setup there you can uh, learn more about that in the description box that said, make sure you're following me on Twitter and Twitch. You can like me on Facebook. Circle me on Google+. Plus. Personal website is oneofweasdom.com. Skylander Club Forum, skylanderclub.com. I created it. I run it. I made it for people like yourself, fans of Chopscotch. I hope you will check it out. If you like what you see, sign up. If I haven't activated your account in a couple of days, uh, drop me a line on Twitter or uh, leave a comment or something, and I will try to get it activated for you. Uh, that said... If you really want to help out, if you really like what I'm doing here, share the videos, tell your friends about me, encourage them to subscribe and spread the word. I'm a small channel, I'm not in a third party network partnership, and subsequently I get cross promoted all the time, and it really sucks and it makes it quite difficult to grow your channel. Uh, so like I said, if you really want to help out, if you frequent forums, if you're big on Reddit, if you've got a group, if you've got friends at school that you play Skylanders with or something, feel free to spread the word. I would sincerely appreciate it. Uh, and you can uh, kind of get reap your rewards or thanks if you want to take advantage of the bonus bricks. So that's a two-way street, I suppose. That said, I'm very excited to play as her. Not a, of course, I want to mention she has, you know, the candy-coated... Uh, Halloween variant coming so that's kind of important to note not sure if it's available immediately at launch or not I'm kind of thinking so because we're very very close to Halloween uh, the 16th in the US it's 15 days out two weeks so it would realistically it should be there we'll have to wait and see though uh, that said something else important I think I was gonna say and I'm not quite sure what it was but my main thing, I want to get her in the game and kind of get a feel for how if I need to view this as a mouth or a nose. I always thought it was a mouth, now I'm thinking that I see her, I can kind of see the skull and I don't, I don't quite know what to expect. But, uh, nonetheless, thanks so much for watching For Myself and Chopscotch. We will catch you back here for more unboxings from the